Before I start this video, I would like to give big thank yous to Lemon Slush, Occam64, and Delow Cell, who has been helping Occam64 lately related to his grammar for the past year or so. If it wasn't for them, this script and this video wouldn't be possible. Anyway, on with the video. Cutie Pie Review. Cutie Pie Review. I don't really need to explain much about the battle between T-Series and PewDiePie, but all I could say is, it's still going. And that's why for this video, I might as well hop up to the bandwagon while I can still be a poor relevant shell of a YouTuber. To be completely honest, I don't really think this war can continue any long. There's only a handful of amount of people that will be able to join fast enough to subscribe to PewDiePie, and his sub gaps are getting smaller and smaller every day. At this point, all the YouTube accounts we can get are all subscribed to him. We've had literal billboards telling people to subscribe to him, gas station signs, even receipts telling people to subscribe to PewDiePie, and even printers! We've milked the PewDiePie and T-Series thing to death, and it's probably going to go downhill from here. Well, have no fear, Andre Tariba is here to save the day. If you don't know who he is, he is one of those quote-unquote animation YouTubers with a white paper background and non-color characters, and also has 1.3 million subscribers. As you can see, I'm subscribed to him, because honestly, I don't have a problem with him. He seems like a great guy and actually has some decent animations. I actually recommend you go check out some of his videos. However... That's not what we're going to be talking about today, because he recently released another video about the whole T-Post series PewDiePie shtick, titled, Why PewDiePie Needs to Hit 100 Million Subscribers. The video itself isn't necessarily that bad by any means, it just has a couple of problems with it that I like to explain here. Some of these points are either going to be my own opinion, or just things in general that can be justified. I'd also like to mention that, yes, I know he already did release another PewDiePie video afterward, but that's not what I'm going to be focused on here, and there's nothing really wrong with it as well. Pewds is winning against T-Series. Holy shit, there is hope. Yes. Yes. How did that happen? So for today's video, I'll be going into this video and bringing up some of the parts that I find either forced, unnecessary, or like I said before, justified. So with that said, let's dive right into the... Well, it isn't really cringe, but there's some bad parts of the video, so... Let's dive right into the mediocre, I guess? Eh, whatever, on with the video. T-Series, the company that paid me cash money to betray PewDiePie not long ago. I still use their bag of rupees as my pillow. Once again, that is a joke. I was not paid by T-Series. Oh, oh, thank God you were just joking. I thought you were actually being serious about that. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Please don't unsubscribe. Instead, why don't you subscribe? Oh, what? I'll see what you did there. And... I make decent content, arguably, and I have a purple goose. Well, um, I guess I can't argue with that. Well, I can't argue with that. Anyway, let's get to today's topic. PewDiePie vs. T-Series. We've already covered this topic, but my position in those past videos was neutral. I was analyzing the situation from an outside perspective. Whereas now, in this late hour, as the sub gap closes in, I think it's time to put my foot down and do my part. Alrighty, so you're going all out map hat with this one, bringing up some suggestions, ideas, and other things as to how you could keep this inevitably dying sub gap up. Alright, show us what you think will help us out in this battle. PewDiePie needs to stay number one. Oh, uh, that's it? He just needs to stay number one until he, his channel, or the website dies? I think that's kind of what the whole point of this battle was to begin with, but whatever I suppose. If not forever, at least until he reaches 100 million subscribers. And here's why that is important. You know how YouTube gives out these play buttons? Of course, we all remember the iconic moment when YouTube sent Felix the Ruby play button for hitting 50 million subscribers. Ah, uh, yes, the humble play button. However, I kind of want to point something out about it. You see, the silver, gold, and diamond play buttons are created by a company named R.S. Owens. They're mainly known for making the award show trophies like the Oscars or the Emmys. However, the Ruby play button was made by a company named Society Awards. And that's why some people think PewDiePie's Ruby play button is a custom one. However, for the sake of this video and the sake of avoiding confusion, Let's say it's a real play button, since it was technically shipped from YouTube to PewDiePie in a way because Society Words gave the button to YouTube and then shipped it to Felix. PewDiePie still had his YouTube Red show, was still included in Rewinds, and Rewind itself was not yet a watered-down commercial made with the sole purpose of attracting advertisers to the platform. Look, I know this is pretty far-fetched and pretty biased, but 
I don't really think Rewind wasn't just a watered-down PC-themed ad. It's just a lot of terrible shit happened this year and the years before it to the point where YouTube doesn't really want to portray that in the Rewind. So they had to find at least all the positive stuff they can that happened this year. But that's just what I personally think. In September of 2018, T-Series hit the same milestone of 50 million subscribers. And they had this giant gala with a stage and performers and members of the press to make sure everyone saw that they too were receiving the 50 million play button. That they were legitimate too. But if you compare the two scenes, PewDiePie is by himself unboxing the award in the intimacy of his home. And you feel like you're there with him. You feel like you helped him get it. So in a strange way, the award belongs to every everyone who supported him. In stark contrast to this, T-Series made a show out of it, the stage almost symbolizing their superiority. While I can't agree with the point about them being very opposite, I think the reason why T-Series even did that was because, well, they're a music company that's been around since 1983. They are a major part of the Indian music industry. So them receiving this award is obviously gonna have a big show to it, especially if it's relating to a milestone. That would be like if Nintendo couldn't show their games at E3 because indie games exist. Not to mention, their Ruby play button is ugly as shit. It's not even Ruby looking. Uh, so is the play button design gonna help out with the battle between them? Also, this is one of the only few parts in the video that I can actually agree on. Maybe what YouTube should have done is make it look like a regular modern play button, but have the button be replaced with T-Series logo. I mean, it's already in the shape of a button and is red like a ruby. It would have been perfect for YouTube to turn that into a play button. And I'm not sure if it's just my brain coming up with sounds, but the video ends with this song. As of recording this, PewDiePie is losing the edge at a rapid pace against T-Series. Unless we do something, T-Series will be the first to reach 100 million subscribers, which is the next milestone and quite possibly the final milestone to be awarded. Unless you count YouTube's own music channel, which is not only a <clears throat> music channel, <clears throat> but it's also ran by a company, YouTube. The account literally has 104 million subscribers at the time of me making this video. Think of this channel as the US T-Series. Both are made in their respective countries and have music from their respective countries. Both are ran by a company and both have over tens of millions of subscribers. As long as it has some type of content on it and the fact that it has a subscriber count, it technically qualifies to be a YouTube channel. So chances are the 100 million play button will remain the pinnacle of creator awards. And PewDiePie needs to be the first one to hit that number. T-Series is gonna overtake him eventually, but we need to muster up the numbers to push Felix over this final milestone before that happens. Not only is it about individual versus corporation, but it's also a statement to YouTube that they don't get to dictate what the platform stands for. Wait, standing for what? Standing for a channel existing that releases any music? I know this might have something to do with the stuff that happened with Monkey Jones that shows how hypocritical and left-leaning YouTube is, but how can that be betrayed by a YouTube battle between Indians that work for a company and a Swedish epic gamer that's sponsored by G Fuel Cotton Candy? PewDiePie is a good-natured dude with edgy jokes that sometimes cross the line, yes. But he does not deserve to be shunned in the way that YouTube has been sweeping him under the rug for the past couple of years. If he's the first to cross 100 million subscribers, YouTube will be forced to acknowledge him. Well, that's probably because YouTube still needs to give their creators awards despite their actions. It really shouldn't matter what content is on that channel, they should still be given a button for that gold regardless of their content or their actions. Simply put, that whole point of YouTube having to acknowledge feelings is kind of pointless since it's just basic facts. And if they continue to ignore him in the face of this gigantic achievement, they will prove that the soul of this platform is dead. Uh, I think people have been figuring that out two years ago, so you're kind of late on that, buddy. So go subscribe to PewDiePie right now. Go to his channel and click the subscribe button. Tell your grandmas, that's right, both of them, to subscribe to PewDiePie. And don't just tell them, stare at them until they do it. Even if they're gonna be like, I'm sorry, Billy, I don't know technology. <laughs> I don't care, grandma, you better figure it out. Cause the fate of YouTube as we know it lies in your wrinkly old ass hands. And that is how the video ends, with an obvious cliche sub to PewDiePie ending. In short, the entire video can be justified one way or another. But just because I'm saying that, and I know it sounds ridiculous for me to say this, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad video. It just has some flaws to it that needed to be fixed. 
I honestly think Andre actually does care a lot about this battle. I mean, why would he be animating all this to begin with? So if Andre is somehow somewhere in the universe watching this, which I'm not expecting, but if he is, please do understand that I'm actually a fan of you. In fact, I'm subscribed to you, as I said a moment ago at the beginning of this video. And if I somehow, someway seemed like I was being too harsh, I apologize. I wanted to be a bit more constructive and not aggressive. But, I want to hear what you think. Do you think his video was good or bad? And who do you think is going to win the battle, T-Series or PewDiePie? Tell me in the comments. And if you have any other suggestions for what you want me to talk about next, and if you have any fan that wants to submit to me, you can submit them all via Twitter, Discord, or in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button, and if you're new, the subscribe button, and the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a video. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Again, big thank you to Lemon Slash, Awkward64, and Delo Cell for making this video entirely possible. Bye!